Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm going to be trying out some high-end makeup. So this is going to be a first impressions makeup tutorial. I really like doing these because it gives me a chance to go through all my new makeup and try everything out and see what I like and what I don't like. Thankfully, the majority of the time I end up liking everything. But now that I just said that, I probably won't. So... <laughs> Anyways, if you like to see me try out some new makeup products, please keep watching. So the first thing I'm going to be trying out, I'm super excited about. I've never tried anything from this brand. This is from Illamasqua. I don't even think I own anything from this brand. I don't think so. But anyways, this is the Hydra Veil and it's the Rehydrating Gel Primer. It kind of looks like skincare, right? So on the box, it says this best-selling clear gel instantly helps skin feel hydrated and smooth. The lightweight water-based formula is quickly absorbed by the skin and is the perfect base for a long wear foundation application, leaving your skin looking flawless. Yeah, I don't think I've heard anybody talk about this, so... Ooh, look at this. It really does look like skincare. It kind of looks like a Tatcha in a way, right? Okay, so there is... What is that? Is that a scooper or a handle? I mean, it kind of looks like it would be like a spatula to get it out, but I think it's just a handle to pull open the package. Oh, yikes. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, it smells like perfume, but like a clean perfume. And it reminds me of the NYX Bear With Me Jelly. Oh my gosh, like it feels identical to the NYX. And I really liked that one. So maybe that would be a good dupe for this because I bet this is pretty pricey. So I'm just going to add some all over and it is getting sticky. I remember the first time I tried the NYX Bear With Me hydrating jelly and the consistency is so weird. Like it feels like jello and then it just like melts into the skin. Okay, so this is the NYX Bear With Me Hydrating Jelly Primer. I think it was $10. It pretty much looks the exact same. It feels the same. I think that the Illamasqua one, though, feels like a little bit more hydrating. We'll see. Maybe I could do a video where I test both out. But so far, I like this. It's pretty fragranted, though, so if you don't like fragrance, you probably won't like that. The NYX Bear With Me one doesn't really have a scent. This smells like perfume, but I don't mind. So now I'm just going to apply some foundation. And as always, I like to use a foundation that I know I already like to give the other products a fair chance. And I also like to do like dedicated videos where I test out a foundation and do a wear test and stuff like that. So I'm just going to apply the Flower Beauty Light Illusion foundation and then I'll be right back. Okay, I feel like that foundation went on top of that primer really nice. It like made the foundation like extra sticky, but like not in a bad way. Hopefully that makes sense. So for concealer, I'm going to be trying out this little tiny deluxe guy. This is from Kat Von D and it's the Locket Concealer. This is in the shade L3 Warm. Like, I don't know what's going on with Kat Von D. So I don't know if they're going to still continue to put out the same products or they're like completely like redoing every single thing like in her line. Like I have no idea since she sold it all but this does have a slanted doe foot Ooh, it feels pretty thick but i do like the shade Ooh, it's like thick but like really creamy watch i'm gonna like really like this <laughs> and then they're not gonna make it anymore why do i feel like i haven't heard like really anybody talk about this but a lot of the products that i try out i'm like always the last person to try them out it seems like and like people have already like moved on from these things you know what I mean but I think I mean just applying it I think I'm actually going to really like it so I'm just going to press that in with a brush Ooh, I really like this it's super full coverage okay I really like this concealer so I hope that even with the rebranding that they still keep it because I like it and I'm probably the only person in the entire world but I've never tried the Locket foundation it's always been on my list of stuff to try but I just haven't so like now that I really like this I probably would really like the foundation but I don't know if they're still gonna make it so I hope they do but I really like this concealer a lot and I definitely used way more than I needed I just used all of the product that came out on the wand I feel like a little bit will go a long way so 
Yeah, I definitely didn't need that much, but it still looks good. I'm just gonna do a little bit of cream contour and then I'll be right back. So I went ahead and filled in my brows too because I don't have any new brow products to try out. And this is one of those days that I'm grateful that I have bangs because it is not a good brow day. <laughs> Yikes. And two, I haven't filled in my brows in like a whole entire week because I'm still, well, we are still quarantined. So yeah. Ugh. Anyways, moving on for powder, I'm going to be trying out the Kat Von D Lock It Translucent Setting Powder. So I'm going to set my under eyes with this first and then maybe use it to set my face. We'll see. It doesn't look like that concealer really creased that much on my under eye, but it did crease on my lid. But this powder being translucent, I feel like there's like a slight yellow undertone to it. It kind of reminds me of the Laura Mercier translucent powder. Like I feel like that to me has like a little bit of a yellow undertone too. That's why I never really use it. I feel like this is similar, like similar formula too. And very, very matte. I'm not sure if this is a powder that I want to set my whole face with just because I feel like it looks like a little bit yellow. So I'm just going to use my Lancome Long Time No Shine Translucent Powder to set my face. For bronzer, I'm going to be trying out this Kylie Cosmetics bronzer in the shade Toasty. This is what it looks like. It looks pretty ashy. I don't know. We're going to see what it looks like on the skin. So I've never tried any of her bronzers that look like this, but I have tried the bronzer that came in the summer collection, I think, from two years ago. I had the bronzer and the highlighter, and it was like a two-in-one. But I've never tried any of these. Oh, that's a pretty color. Weird. Like, to me, it looks pretty cool toned in the pan, but on the face, it's like a nice mixture of warm and cool and it does seem like it's pretty pigmented too so the next thing i'm going to be trying out is this blush from kylie this is in the shade baddie on the block i think it's a really pretty like peachy pink matte shade. I think it would go with like any kind of makeup look you wanted to do like any kind of eye look so we're gonna find out. I don't think I've tried any of the blushes in this packaging so I don't know if the formula is different or anything like that. Because the last blush I tried from her was in like the cardboard packaging. I can't remember what the shade was but I used to use it all the time. It was like an orange shade. I'm not sure, but those are the only blushes that I've tried. I've never tried these, but I want to say she did say that she changed the formula, right? I mean, I really liked those, so I'm assuming that I like these, right? And what I like about them, too, is, like, you have to build these up because you guys know I have a super heavy hand when it comes to blush. I don't know what it is. So I like that with these, you have to build them up. They're not just like super pigmented because a lot of blushes, you can just like barely tap in there and then it's like, like a whole stripe on your face. So I do like that you have to build these up. And I think this is like a really pretty shade. It's like the perfect like spring rosy shade, I guess. And then I'm also going to be trying one of her new highlighters in this packaging. I've never tried the highlighters in this packaging either. So this one's in the shade Princess Please. This is what it looks like. It's kind of like a silvery pink shade. Seems like it's going to be really pigmented. It's like a metallic highlighter. I feel like this is one of those highlighters that if you sprayed your face first with setting spray or you got your brush wet that you could really make this be like you know like super intense or you could just build it up for like a more natural glow I guess because like look at that that's like more of like a glow from within and then when you add more you get more of that like oomph highlighter you know I 
This highlighter though feels a little bit chalky compared to the other ones that I've tried. Like the other ones in the old cardboard packaging. Like those to me felt like almost like a hard smooth. Does that make sense? And then these feel like they would break easy and they feel kind of chalky. Like kind of like a cheaper highlighter from the drugstore. So that to me is a little weird. Definitely a little weirded out about this formula but I think the highlighter is really pretty. I'm going to take the Kat Von D translucent powder, the lock powder, and I'm going to bake my contour with it. I'm also going to take a little bit of the Kat Von D powder and just kind of pat it over my nose contour because I feel like it's a little harsh. Moving on to eyes. I'm super excited for this. I'm going to be trying out the Natasha Denona Matte Safari Palette. This is what it looks like. It's this really pretty like olive shade. And then the only thing though is like when you open it, it like creaks. And you guys know Natasha Denona is expensive. So I feel like she could have done a little better than that. Like I feel like it's going to break. But can you hear it? I don't know. But the mirrors in these palettes are amazing. So this is what the palette looks like. Like it says it's all matte. And I don't know, I'm just super excited to play with it. I really like her Sunset Palette, I think is what it's called. So I'm going to be using this today. I'm first going to go in with this shade right here. I think it's called Malia. I'm just going to put this shade all over my lids. Ooh, there's a lot of kickback in this. Yikes. I'm just going to place that all over. It's kind of like a creamy pink shade. And also, if you haven't seen any of my full face of first impressions, I started doing two different eye looks every time I use a new palette because I feel like one that gives me the opportunity to create two different eye looks, but then I also can mess with more colors in the palette so I can get a better feel for it. So when at the end of this video, when I have two different eye looks, that's why. So I'm going to go in, I think I'm going to do, I always try to use a lot of shades. So I think on one eye, I'm going to take all of these shades right here. And then on the other eye, we'll go in with like the blues and the greens and the grays. Let's try that. So I'm first going to go in with the shade called Tamarid, I believe. It's down here in the corner. I'm going to put that as my transition shade. And it's really pigmented, but again, there's like so much kickback in the palette. I'm going to apply that into my crease. really pretty shade my eyebrows look so bad it's like throwing off my like eye look I feel like okay now I'm gonna go in with the shade called Amhara oh my gosh I don't even know I'm sorry this one doesn't have as much kickback as the other two and I'm just gonna apply that into the crease as well and a little bit on the lid that's a really pretty shade too shade called desert date i'm going to apply that in like my upper crease it kind of reminds me of peach smoothie but like a little bit darker the infamous peach smoothie from makeup geek apply that in my upper crease i feel like all these colors just blend it all into one color <laughs> i'm gonna take a morphe r39 and go in with a shade called tribe it's the orange in the palette I'm going to put that on my lid. Wow, that's really pigmented. Look at that. I'm going to put that all over my lid and a little bit in the crease. Ooh, okay. That might be my favorite shade in the palette so far. I'm going to use my finger just to really pack that on my lid. Wow, that is so pigmented. Oh, I'm gonna go in with a shade called let's do thorns kind of like a red brown I'm gonna put that in the outer so I'm just putting that shade in the outer corner and then blending in not really 
really a big fan of the eye look so far. I mean, I really like the colors, but I don't really like what I did. <laughs> so let's apply more of the Tribe shade, which is the orange shade. So now I'm going to take the shade called Savannah. It's this olive shade, and I'm going to put that on my lower lash line. Oh my gosh, I like barely put my brush in there, and it's everywhere. So this shade is probably the closest shade to this, but it, I don't know, it feels a little patchy, like it's not really wanting to blend out that well. Weird, I'm kind of disappointed in this palette so far because one, it's really expensive and two, I feel like Natasha Denona is like, like her eyeshadows are really good and this sunset palette that I have is amazing, like I have no complaints. But this palette, I feel like the formula is totally different from that palette. Let me know if you guys have tried this palette and what you think because like so far, I'm not very impressed. Now I'm going to go in the shade called Rhino and I'm just going to put that on the outer corner just to deepen that up. Which, it, when it blends out, it looks exactly like the Savannah shade. You guys, I am not a big fan of this palette. Maybe I'm just having a bad makeup day, but so far, I'm just not feeling it. Ooh, and I don't like this Kat Von D powder either. Like, my under eyes look super cakey, and this one's already creasing. I'm just going to take a clean brush. Let's start on the other eye. Let's give this eye a break. I'm going to go in with the shade called Lotus first. Use this as my transition shade. It's a really pretty kind of like pinky lilac shade. And now I'm going to go in with a shade called Maasai, I believe. It's down here. I'm going to put that on my lid. That's really pigmented and that's really pretty. Uh, I feel like when I blend it out, it's kind of patchy. It makes me wonder if I got like a dud. I did think it was weird when I ordered this palette from Sephora. It didn't have like one of those plastic sheets over it, like the protectors, and I thought that was odd. But I didn't, I don't know. Oh, and now that I think about it, I think when I first got this, there was a fingerprint in it. Was that this palette? I can't remember. I know I got a palette recently that had a fingerprint in it. I would think that it was this one I wouldn't continue to use it so maybe I'm crazy but I do now that I think about it I feel like Casey Holmes said when she ordered this palette that hers had a fingerprint in it or something I don't know it was something weird like that like this palette is making me not want to finish this video like that's how upset I am about it I, I am not a big fan of any of this oh my gosh so I'm gonna take the Fata Morgana oh my gosh I don't even know it's the blue shade right here <laughs> I'm gonna put that on my lower lash line It's weird. It's almost like this palette is like made to just use one shadow at a time. Like one shadow is your entire eye look because for some reason like when they like mix together they just don't they just don't look good. Like they don't mesh well at all. Oh gosh like I'm not a big fan. I'm just gonna wipe off this brush a little bit. I'm gonna go with the shade called Stone. It's this gray shade in the palette and I'm gonna run that underneath my lower lash line. I hate this like like I said I feel like if I took one shade and that was my whole eye look I would be just fine but putting them together like oh oh my gosh like it just does not look good to me I'm gonna go in with a shade called voodoo and put that on the outer V over here I feel like that shade just kind of like blended into nothing <laughs> like what is happening 
Oh my gosh. Okay, so there's only one shade I didn't use, or two. I didn't use the matte cream shade, and I didn't use the dark brown called Shea. So let's just put, let's just use them. So, <laughs> um, what should we do? I don't know. Let's take the Aya shade. I'm just going to take a flat shader brush. I mean, it looks okay. I'm going to put this under here. I just want to see what it looks like. Okay, so that's a really nice shade. I feel like if you wanted to do like a no makeup makeup look, you could use this shade all over the lid and it would set the concealer, but it still kind of looks like skin. So I like that. And I feel like this would be a good like eraser shade kind of. So if you needed to blend out something like a harsh line, like you could use this shade to do that. Yeah, I think that's the best description. It's like an eraser shade. Um, then we have the dark brown shea shade. So let's go ahead and apply that in this outer corner and see what that looks like. I think I like the shea shade more than I like the thorn one, which is the one I put in this outer V in the first place, the other brown shade. Okay, so I used every single shade in the palette. My favorite shade is the tribe shade. But I feel like I would... I feel like I would do an eye look using the Desert Date, the peach smoothie shade, like, in the crease, and then put that all over the lid. And then I really like the Maasai shade and the Lotus shade, and then I like the two matte cream shades. But other than that, I am not, like, they just don't work well together, which is weird, right? Like, I hate this eye look. Like, you would think I got this palette from the drugstore. Like, the drugstore has better palettes than this. Like, I'm obviously going to use it because it was expensive, but like I said, yeah, the next time I pick this up, I'm only going to use two shades together. Like, I'm not going to mix a bunch together. Oh my gosh, I'm so disappointed in this. Yikes. So, I'm just going to apply some mascara and then I'll be right back. It always takes me forever to get used to myself when I don't have my bangs straight across. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> anyway, so I don't have any new lip liner to try out, so I just used my El Maquillage Times Carly Bible Luna Lip Liner. So for lips, we're going to be trying out this Bare Minerals lipstick in the shade Bubbles. I don't think I've tried the lipsticks that look like this. And it's just a nude shade. Oh, it's not so as pigmented as I thought it would be. Ooh, but it's really pretty and it looks really moisturizing on the lips. It feels moisturizing, but it looks moisturizing. Ooh, I like this. It reminds me a lot of the Baby Lips color bombs from Maybelline. Like they almost look the same too. I feel like the Bare Minerals one is more opaque than the Maybelline baby lip ones but these are my favorite i wore them all summer last summer okay i really like that finally for a lip gloss i'm going to be trying out the kkw beauty lip gloss in the shade super nude never tried any of her glosses but i am going to put it on the back of my hand i don't want to mess up the applicator it feels really sticky actually it doesn't really have a scent so i'm just going to pick that up it's really sticky it's really sticky, but it went on really nice. Like, it just, like, glides on. Ooh, I really like this lip combo, too. It's about time. I hate my eyes. <laughs> okay, love this lip combo. I love this shade, and I love this Bare Minerals lipstick. Pretty much hate everything else though, but hey. Anyways, okay, so I'm finished with this makeup look. So let's go ahead and go over everything and I'll let you guys know my final thoughts. So in no particular order, the first thing is the Bare Minerals Lipstick in the shade Bubbles. I love this and I want to say I found this at, it was either Marshalls or TJ Maxx. So I think I paid probably around $7. That sounds about right. So definitely check out your... TJ Maxx, Marshalls, so check that out too, but I really like this. I want to see if I can get a couple more shades because this is definitely something that I would like to wear all the time. Love the shade, love the formula. Next, we have the KKW Beauty Lip Gloss in the shade Super Nude. I really like this too. Makes my lips look super glossy. It feels pretty lightweight. It's really sticky, but it doesn't feel sticky on the lips, which is weird because when I went like this, it felt really sticky. 
but on my lips it doesn't feel like that. I really like how glossy it made my lips look and the only other gloss that I have that's this light is the MAC Myth so it'll be nice to kind of like switch up a little bit because I feel like MAC Myth has a little bit of like a peachiness to it and then this is just like this is nude like this is like a concealer shade so I actually really like that. Then we have the Kylie Princess Please Highlighter. I like this but I would pass on it unless you can get it on sale or I did see that Ulta was like giving these away for free if you bought I don't know probably like $50 worth of stuff from Ulta you could get this for free if you had a promo code. I again this is the only highlighter I've tried from this like new packaging but I Oh my god. What? Did I not say that it felt like really crumbly? Oh my god. Oh. What just happened? Well, that's a first for me. What? Okay, now I'm like even more mad because I know that I paid a full price for this and it literally just fell apart. Wow. I'm going to see if I can fix that, but I'm not going to waste my time like repressing it. Like what? Skip on that. Oh my gosh. See, I thought the formula felt a little bit different than the old packaging and like it makes me feel like she just like redid the formula cheaper and then repackaged. It's almost like the cardboard, the formula in the cardboard packaging was good, but now that she switched to plastic packaging, she had to make the formula of like the highlighter cheaper to make up for the cost of the packaging. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that just happened. Then we have the Kylie Cosmetics Toasty Bronzer. I really like the shade of this. I think it's really pretty. I think it would look nice on light and medium skin tones. Like, I really like the shade of it, but man, like, it's going to be really hard for me to be nice about Kylie Cosmetics since that just happened to me. Then we have the blush in the shade Batty on the block. I really like this blush too. It's a really pretty matte peachy pink shade and I really like it and I cannot stop thinking about that damn highlighter. Oh my god. <sighs> my least favorite thing from this is the eyeshadow palette. Save your money. I'm if I can return it I will but if I can't, then I'm going to be stuck with it. I'm going to make myself use it. But yeah, totally save your money. If you want to try a Natasha Denona product, I would definitely suggest trying her cream contour palette. I can't remember what it's called. But it has creams in it and also has powders in it. I really like that. I also like her blush highlight palette that looks like that as well. And then the sunset eyeshadow palette. Love. But definitely save your money. Don't, don't get that. Then we have the Illamasqua Primer. I really like this too, but if it's, a, if it's a dupe for the NYX Bear With Me, I would definitely, if you're on a budget or if you want to try this kind of like weird water primer gel stuff, I would try the NYX one first. And if you like that one, then I would spend money on this. But I do really like this. I'm going to continue to use it, but I don't necessarily think that I would pay full price for this again if it's just as good as the NYX one because the NYX one's only 10 bucks. So... I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about this. So let me know if you've tried this Illamasqua gel primer. What is this called? Hydra Veil Primer. Then I have the Kat Von D Locket Translucent Powder. I hate this for my under eyes. I totally think it just destroyed my concealer. I think this would be nice to bake with. It reminds me so much of the Laura Mercier powder and that powder does not work for me. I know. I'm probably the first person to ever say that but I don't like how that looks on my skin and I only use it to bake underneath my bronzer and contour. I never use it to set my face. I never use it to set my under eyes because I just don't like it. And I don't like that there's like a yellow cast to it and I feel the exact same way about this locket powder. So pass. I do however really like the Kat Von D locket concealer. I love this. I hope after the whole rebranding thing like they're still going to continue to carry this and this like like the same formula because I do want to purchase this in a full size. So that's everything. Let me know if you guys have tried out any of these products in the comments below and what you think. Please subscribe if you haven't already and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys later. Bye.